Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, ladies and gentle beans. Welcome back to the Van Build Adventure. This week I'm talking about the control panel. I decided to put a control panel and shelf above my kitchen, above, sort of, above the, the, the metal strut that kind of sticks out. A lot of people just kind of go straight over it and ignore its existence, but I decided to kind of lean into it and make it a feature and use it as a place to put my battery monitor, my inverter switch, most of the light switches, and some kitchen lights that will help illuminate the kitchen area, the worktop and such. I've, I've learned from rented houses that often having lights just on the ceiling in a kitchen means that you can't actually see the stuff on the worktop that well because you're always casting a shadow over it which is extremely irritating and one of those things that just kind of grates on you in life so i thought sneaking in some lights to sit above the worktop sort of below eye line would be really nice and they have been really useful i really like them and they're even they even kind of provide like a nice chilled evening light as well when you don't want quite as much light blaring but don't want to just be sat in the dark they're really good the first step was to raise the supports i had on either side of the, the control panel area the, the strut um, i'd already put some supports in but i needed to raise them up a little bit more to bring the shelf out so they could sit in front of the bit at the top which kind of sticks out a little bit more so i used some trusty 33 by 33 millimeter baton like i use for framing most of the things from this point out and a bit prior to this. Once I got those cut out and in place, I then cut a approximate rectangle of three millimeter ply that I had left over from doing the walls around the bed to just form a back to the shelf and you know make it just cover up the metally bits and insulation and stuff. I then attached batten along the base of that and that was on top of where I'd stuck the shelf. So it was a little it was three millimeters off from the wall, which maybe wasn't the best idea, but I worked with it. I then built a little shelf to stick here out of 12 millimeter ply that I had left over and then cut a bit of batten to attach to the front to start providing the top part of the frame that the front would screw into. I knew I would want to pop this off for maintenance, so I wanted to make sure that the front could be unscrewed and screwed back on quite easily without needing to mess with anything else, both to help me finish off the front a little bit later point and also in case I ever want to change anything later or need to get to the wiring, as that's where all of the light switches are, other than the one that's just above the desk, which is at the door. I then cut the front. is actually housing all the control panel bits and attached that to the shelf and well the frame on the shelf I kind of got that all in position so that I could get the right sizes for the additional little bits of batten that were going to run along the side of the frame and attach to the bit that was already on the wall and also just get the height so I could see where the bottom was going to be I did that with everything removed from the wall and then I think I took the front off and used the frame that I'd done for the top as like a template for doing the frame at the bottom but this was like a complete rectangle as opposed to being like three sides with the other side already attached to the wall. I then attach both the shelf with its frame and the bottom frame to the wall using the little L bracket metal things which are just great. And But of course because I put the top frame on top of the 3mm ply backing I also had to raise these bits out to make them roughly even so I used like bits of scrap and it was all a bit tricky I probably shouldn't have put the baton on top of the, the backing I should have just done them separately but hey it wasn't a big deal it was a bit sketchy and a little bit harder than it needed to be but it wasn't it wasn't a problem everything did manage to get in okay I probably also could have just used bigger bits to raise it up and that probably would have made things a little bit easier until instead I seem to have used the tiniest bits that I could find um saving on weight ha <laughs> ha yeah, I'm sure it was very very helpful yeah I didn't use any vertical frame to connect these to the top and bottom frames because I wanted to make sure they didn't get in the way of anything that I was actually putting into the control panel so the rigidity for the front is kind of all just supplied by the front I could have probably done some other stuff if I felt like I needed it, but it's fine. It's not like it's really holding any weight or anything. I wanted to make sure that if I ever wanted to change the configuration of the front, I had all the options possible. I'd have to obviously remake the front panel, but that would be all that I would need to do. I wouldn't need to do anything else. So with both of the bits of frame, top and bottom attached, I then 
stuck the front on, made it rigid, got it in the position that it was going to be in, and at that point I could then cut the ply for the base, which I think again I just used more off spare 9mm ply that I had left over from the front piece for the bed. So I cut that out and attached it just to make sure that it all fit right and then took it off so that I could drill the holes to put the lights in. But this is where I made a bit of a mistake in the placement. I didn't take account for where the frame was properly and if I'd continued drilling where they were I would have bumped into the frame and that's obviously no good if you're trying to shove a light in there. So I thought I was just gonna have to do it again but in a moment of just going hey let's try this I tried flipping it around and as it happened that fit perfectly so it's cool I was just operating in mirror world for a little bit but we, we came back to reality and everything worked out fine so that enabled me to just cut the holes of the hole saw like I did for the ceiling although I think I used a bigger hole saw this time because <laughs> I don't didn't want to do no more shaving and that that worked out well I didn't have to do any faffing around with that and then one at a time inserted the lights and crimped the cables, stripping back the wire with a standing knife or box cutter, which is not the best way to do it, but I had decided to skimp on buying a wire stripper because I felt like I'd already spent too much money on tools, but it would have been worthwhile. It probably would have been worthwhile with getting it even at this point in the build. However, I was too stubborn, so I just continued with the standing knife. Then I started running the cable for the stuff that was going to be in the control panel. So the battery monitor was nice and easy. They give you a really, really long cable for that. I think it's designed for pretty much any situation. But the inverter switch was a lot tighter. Although it did reach, it was kind of like a bit only just. And I couldn't run the cable for that with the rest of my cables. It's kind of like on its own going diagonally across the back. So it, it kind of goes across the rear of my sub which is kind of sketchy if when I have to move that to get to anything like the electrical setup not really ideal not much else I could have done about it given the layout of the van I kind of everything basically ended up where it had to be so yeah just a word of warning if you get a Guyandel Giandel Guyandel uh, inverter the cable for the switch is not as long as it could be. Be careful. But yeah, I just shoved that into a piece of uh, split conduit and yeah, got it all in place. And that's kind of where this video has to end. Quite a finicky little woodwork, woodworky businessy thingy, majiggy. Uh, but I don't put in the switches and the actual control panel bits for a little bit later not till after i've sorted out the wiring a bit more got everything neatened up and in place and done a lot more crimping and whatnot and also done the other wheel arch box on the right hand side so yeah that's coming up next basically uh like subscribes comments much appreciated but that's that you know that that's the, that's the way it goes that's the way the cookie crumbles I don't know what I'm saying. See you later, Taterinos. Bye. Bye.